Okay, I woke up a little bit earlier again and read a little about hacking so maybe I can, uh, you know, crack the code to that contain to that controlled substances locker now. Although I didn't do that great of a job last time when I was trying to accomplish something there, so that might be a bit of a problem. I did some combat training as well, because hell if I'm, you know, I'm probably going to need it, judging from what has happened. So, hopefully, it's going to be enough. in the mailbox? Nope. Fuck, I should probably hide this body a little bit deeper in the alley just so that uh, the others don't find it. I have enough pr trouble as it is. Although, to be honest, it's kind of weird how it was sitting here the whole last night and nobody cares, so Maybe I'm too paranoid. Mm, you know what? Actually, I think I'm going to give this uh, clinic a little bit of a rest, uh, just for the things to calm down there. I was supposed to meet this uh, gimbal guy uh, around here t to talk about Carson. Uh, well, not about Carson, to talk about McGee, uh, who is the person that Carson, the bounty hunter working for Kilpatrick, was looking for. So I might as well do that. Yes? May I help you? Yeah, we spoke on the phone yesterday. Oh, right, right. I'll buzz you in. Thank you. Welcome to Gimbal's Prosthetics and Medical Supplies. You're here for the modeling job? Good, good. You seem to have rather well-developed limbs, if you don't mind me saying so. Okay, that's fucking creepy, but... Hmm. Good evening. Who are you? Ah, I guess you're Gimbal, right? Oh, go got a little bit confused there for a second. Hello. Oh, yes, forgive me. My name is Gimbal. Stanley Gimbal. But, oh dear, let us dispense with formalities. You can call me Stan. Hmm. Do tell me a little about yourself, Stan. Just because. Me? Oh, I'm just trying to make things a little easier for those who find themselves um, disadvantaged. Giving a helping hand, you might say. A leg up. <laughs> Bloody clever, that one. Uh. I'm dead, and even then I'm dying inside. But you do seem a little bit disadvantaged yourself. If you don't mind me saying that. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, you mean the arm. Yes, uh, uh, that's an interesting story. If you've got the time for one. Eh, sure. Why the hell not? Well, you might say I have a certain love affair with the human anatomy. An obsession, really. Prosthetics seemed a natural occupation in which to uh, focus my enthusiasm, as it were. And what happened to your arm, then? Well, I came to realize that I would never truly reach mastery in prosthetics without knowing what it was like to have to use one. Oh, fuck. I feel like I know where this is going. You're not telling me you... And so I decided, quite out of the blue, actually, to cut off my own arm. My work, as you can well imagine, has quite improved since then. Hmm. Well, actually, I've heard that uh, down at the morgue in the clinic, 
you can get like uh, access access to corpses for scientific research into prosthetics. Maybe you'd be interested in that. Oh, that's wonderful! Yeah, indeed it is. Just uh, check in with the guy called uh, Vandal. He's the employee of the month. You're not going to miss him. Have fun. <laughs> well, that was just something I came up with on the spot, but I guess that solves the mm, whole uh, problem with blood. And to be honest, this guy did seem awfully creepy. Like, I wouldn't be one bit surprised if he turned out to be a serial killer himself, so I've probably even done the neighborhood a favor. Mm, but with him gone, you should be ready to... Okay, fuck. Okay, I'm seriously creeped out and I'm dead. And th this guy... My money is on serial killer. Let's, let's see if that, if that assumption leads me anywhere. Uh, I'll just look around for either McGee uh, or maybe Carson himself. And this is locked, can't really, can't really do anything with that. Although, fuck, there's some crazy... Some crazy photos in there. There's like a fucking clown with the word dad on it. Some anatomical diagrams. Okay, fuck, he's clearly insane, right? Like, there's something wrong going on here. I can... Yeah, look at that call Bill on Thursday and there's a fucking naked woman uh, arms crunk some giddy what the f what the fuck is that like he's got like uh, fetuses and fucking teeth what the fuck is that like uh, clear clearly he he's disturbed in more more way than one more ways than one so I might have done the society a favor by getting rid of him Mm, what's in his fridge? My money is on corpses. Oh, look at that. I wasn't that far off, to be honest. Huh, was he a vampire Vampire then? Or is it just weird? Because I know I'm going to take it, of course. Uh, I know there are some humans who, who drink uh, blood as well, because uh, they treat it like a fetish thing, right? Like some kind of weird subculture. Oh, yeah, 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 he's definitely crazy. Like, look at this. This does not look... Fuck, there's a fucking photo of a clown with the word dad under it. Like, that doesn't look like something a well-adjusted person would have. And this chair is the exact same they had at the clinic where they were holding... Uh, I think Lily was her name? The thin blood vampire? So... Is he a vampire as well? If so, then he's pretty stupid to uh, be duped like that, because I presume... Yeah, yeah, right. Bloody tools. Surgical tools. So, I think I was 100% correct there, but... I, about him being a serial killer, or at least, you know, insane. Uh, but, if he really is a vampire, then that would be kind of weird how he got tricked so easily to visit the uh, the vicinity of the blood bank, because if he was a vampire, then he would know it's a blood bank. Like, uh, obviously everybody know, knows it's a blood bank, but what I mean is he would know uh, that it's run by vampires, right? So, I'm not sure what's the deal with that. Maybe he was just a crazy human. Mmm, that's a strong smell. But I'm not going to lick the blood off of the table, because that's disgusting. Not to mention, kind of demeaning. Yeah, so he's definitely a crazy serial killer. There is that. Mm, on, one, on one hand, I feel kind of... Uh, mm, hmm. Well, I guess giving him to Vandal it gives me a greater reward in the long run, because... You know, they are going to keep him alive uh, to get the blood out of him mm, for as long as they can. Mm, fuck, this is locked. Can't really open it. And to be honest, it is easier once it, it's bagged, you know. I don't really care 
once it's in a bag, I don't really care if it's from a guy uh, or from a chick. Um, I can just take it and don't think about it. So, oh, fuck, there's somebody inside. Huh? Oh, hey, help! You gotta get me out of here, man. This guy's a freaking nut job. Uh, you mean Gimbal? Who, Gimbal? Yeah, Gimbal. That guy's been taking pieces off of me and McGee over here for the last three days. He's crazy, man. Freaking crazy. Uh, well, how do I open this door then? Thanks, man. You're a lifesaver. I wasn't sure I was gonna make it. I'm telling you, I've been on some weird cases, but this one takes the cake. So, I take it you're Carson? Yeah, yeah, that's me. How did you know? Uh, actually, Arthur Kil Kilpatrick sent me. He did? Oh man, that's solid. I owe that guy big. I hope I can figure out a way to get him back for this. Mm, he's got some work for you, so we should probably head back to his office. What? Oh no, man. No, no, no. Not for me anymore. Look at my hand. Gimbal took my trigger finger for a trophy. <laughs> I'm all through with this business. I hate to leave Arthur in a lurch, but that's just the way it is. Well, I'll give him the bad news then. Thanks again. Don't worry, I'll take care of old Stumpy here. Yeah. So, I take it you'll call the cops and all that. I'm going to... Um, go away. <laughs> so, whoa. So I guess this is McGee then. I can't really open that. <laughs> so, so, so this gimbal guy was crazy after all. You could say I've done a good deed by t turning him over to Vandal. <laughs> Not that they knew it at the time, but don't really care. Uh, but that leaves Kilpatrick without a bounty hunter. So I think what I'm going to do is pay him a visit, actually, and mm, ask him if maybe I can do the job. You know, for some extra uh, dollars. Okay, the hunters are gone from here, at the very least. Uh, you know what? I'll pay a visit to the Thin Bloods on the beach uh, just to c collect a reward from E, maybe, and and to sell off all of the crap to that gullible one that's hanging around there. Hey, you. Do you have any of those items you mentioned? Yeah, sure. I have unicorn blood. How much do you need? Uh, I'll buy as much as you've got. Huh. Well, I do have one bag for 120. As soon as I have three bags, I should have enough to become human again. Oh, what a tragedy. Huh. So apparently... He wasn't in... maybe he can smell the difference somehow, but this one is better, so I'm not sure why doesn't he want this one. <laughs> maybe it's not unicorn enough for him. Uh, well, I guess I'll have to go back at some point then. Yo, E. Brought my lily back. She told me all about what happened. I don't know why you helped this, but your blood's worth bottling. I'll never let her go again. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm gonna be getting out of LA soon. Too dangerous here. Rosa told us something big's about to happen, and I don't want to be here when the jack comes out of the box. Take that for what you will. Well, if this shit house goes up in flames, it'll probably be my fault. So you'd be wise to skip town while you still can. Thin blood. Looks thick enough to me. Huh. Well, I guess I'll have to 
to get some more of this regular kind of blood mm, for this guy. <laughs> that actually leaves me with a better kind for myself, so it's not that I'm complaining. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm going to take a sip. Yeah, yeah, I definitely feel better. Okay, so I'm going to go to Kilpatrick's to tell him about Carson. Are the hunters still here? Fuck. It seems so. Yeah, damn it. Fuck. Then again, they are uh, a good enough source of blood. Mm. And they seem to be pretty egalitarian about their whole affair, you know. There's a lot of chicks uh, among those hunters, so at least it ma makes me feel less icky about actually, you know, sucking them off. Uh, but uh, killing them does attract even more attention, so I'll try to avoid them at least for now. Evening. What's shaking? I found Carson. Unfortunately, he's not really coming back. What? Ain't coming back? What do you mean he ain't coming back? Well, his trigger finger got cut off by a psychopath. Man, that's a tough one. Bounty hunter ain't no good without his trigger finger. Well, hell, that really leaves me in hot water, boy. Gonna cost old Arthur real good. Mm, what did you need Carson to find? I got this guy with a sheet a mile long, put in on three warrants. His girlfriend put up for the bond and now he missed the court date. I can't get in touch with either of them. Want a job? Uh, sure, but you still haven't pay paid me for finding Carson yet. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, here you are. Thanks. About that job you mentioned. Well, it won't be much of a job since you ain't licensed and all, but until I can get me another bounty hunter, I need you to find out if this guy skipped town or what. Mm. So, you just want me to find out if he's here or not? Yeah, no body attachment or nothing. Just find out if he's here or where he went. I'll pay you. Deal? Sure, I suppose I could do that. Great, great, all right. The guy's name is Mike Durbin. Goes by the name Muddy. His girlfriend put up for his bond. She lives over there above Tripp's pawn shop. Her name is Marion Murrieta, but I haven't been able to get in touch with her. Hmm. So, what's the guy's record like? Well, he was brought up on manslaughter charges years back, but he got acquitted. Since then, he's been in and out for this and that. Small time stuff, mostly. Hmm. And what did he do this time? Most recently, he was brought in as part of a big case on stolen auto parts. It's this big chop shop thing that's going on in Santa Monica. Been in the paper. <laughs> chop shop, huh? Above the pawn, sh pawn shop? That's right. Mary Ann Murrieta. In them crappy places above the pawn shop. Find out where the hell Muddy is, where is he going, whatever. But be careful. You're not licensed, and if anything bad goes down, I don't know you. You hear me? Sure, I hear you. All right, come back when you got some info. Thanks in advance. Uh, well, I'll let you know as soon as I find something. Well, in one thing, uh, if not in anything else, he is correct. That place is a shithole. Huh. I don't want to go to the clinic just yet. Mm. Because I would prefer the things to calm down a little out there, so I guess I can check this asylum club. I'm supposed to talk with the owner, Therese or something? Ooh, 
what do we have here? Another scrumptious young plaything straight out of life and into my club? Mmm, you smell new, little boy. Like fabric softener do on freshly mowed astroturf. Oh, I'm not frightening you, am I, duckling? Um, not really, but who are you? I'm the finger down your spine when all the lights are out. And the name on all the men's room walls. When I pout, the whole world tries to make me smile. And everyone always wants to know who is that girl. And who is that girl? Do you have a name? I am Jeanette. And this bit of chaos crammed in a certifiable giggle is my club. Oh, I just love to give you funny feelings all night, sweetheart, but I really must trouble with some business. We'll reunite Sweden soon, I promise. Mm, sure, whatever. So I guess that's the sister. I'm looking for Therese, though. Mm, presumably Therese is... Wait. Fuck, that's the idiot from... Uh, from before the clinic, right? Uh, what's his name? Hoax? Something? Huh. I wonder what he's doing here. Like he's one of those vampire slaves, right? Ghoul, I feel? It was called? Anyway, uh, I feel like Therese is probably somewhere in an office or something. Presumably up there. Fuck, it's locked. Huh. Hmm. Maybe the bartender knows how to get to her. Evening? I'm looking for Therese. Can you, do you know where I can find her? I need to talk to her. Yeah, yeah, I hear that from everyone, pal. She expecting you or something? Mm. She... Yeah, that's it. She's expecting me. Right, look, I'll cut your break with the busy here. I'll bust her and tell her you're coming. Take the elevator over there. Huh? If I hear that you're not supposed to be there, you and me are gonna fight to hide when you hear me. Sure, whatever. Thanks. and Jeanette bickering or something. Door is closed and they don't seem to care about me knocking. So I guess while they are... Oh, that's a pretty ring there. Might do wait. You're worth the wait. You pull your pranks, make fun of my ways. Excuse me, you're just one big joke. Don't you call me that? Should I start calling a duck up here as well? I'm your sister. How can you treat me like this? That's it, Jeanette. Run away from the truth. I'll take care of everything, as always. Evening. Please, come in. I do apologize for my sister's crassness if it made you uncomfortable. She's unabashedly scandalous, but in the club business, I suppose that kind of personality is a necessary evil. If you say so, I guess that means you're Therese. Therese Vorman, yes. I'm the proprietor of this club, and the only person in this city whose good side it's in your best interest to stay on. What brings you to Santa Monica? I need you to call off the feud with Bertram Tongue. Tongue's exile is self-imposed, I assure you. But then, what reason would I have not to hate that loathsome Nosferatu scoundrel? Bloody Nosferatu. They're so... unclean. 
What's your problem with him, exactly? He meddles in my affairs. He's a bad influence on my sister and she on him. If you were in my place, would you let him compromise your authority? You most certainly would not. I'd quite like it if I never had to hear that name again. So... Do you want me to find him and kill him for you? Would that be... Uh, would that... Mm, you know, help our business or something? I'm not sure the Camarilla would find that an acceptable method of dealing with one's rival. And right now, I very much need their approval to become officially recognized as the legitimate administrator of this city. Well then, if you don't want him dead, can you at the very least call off the feud? Why would I do that? Let him think I mean to kill him. That way I don't have to worry about him sabotaging everything. Do you realize how his subterfuge makes me look to the Camarilla? To be honest, I don't really care. I do need to see him. Tung and his co-conspirator's actions ruined my chance at partnership in a crucial piece of property. I do have several other promising ventures, and one in particular has been, to say the least, an ordeal. Hmm. I'd be willing to put the word out that my grievances with Tung have been swept under the rug, but in return, you'll have to help me remove a particularly burdensome spirit from a property I'm looking to invest in. A spirit? You mean a ghost? Or something? Oh, I forgot. You're still new to this. Allow me to break you in. Yes, ghosts exist. Werewolves, mummies, and I'd expect a whole lot of other things I've never seen share the night with us. <sighs> sure. If that's what I have to do, how do I get rid of the ghosts? Rumor is that a personal item of a ghost may be used to draw it out or excise it from its haunt. While I don't put a lot of stock in hearsay, it's my last option. So I want you to go to the Ocean House Hotel, find an item of the spirits, and bring it back. And if I do this, promise that you will call off the feud. Oh, I fully intend to do so. You'll find that dealing with me on the whole is appreciably more predictable than dealing with some of the egomaniacs that are my peers. So long as our business doesn't go sour, my word is gold. Well, I can respect that at the very least. So, see you in some time. Before I forget, take this. The only way to reach the Ocean House this time of night is through a tunnel in the sewers. You'll need that key to open the gate for that tunnel. <sighs> sewers? Great. If, it, if that's what it takes, then okay, I guess. If you'll excuse me, I've got situations to set straight. Well, goodbye. <laughs> Is that them? To be honest, out of the two, I probably enjoy dealing with Therese more. At the very least, she's more predictable. Or at least, that's how it seems. Not that I appreciate all of this hoop jumping, but... I don't have much of a choice. Because I don't know how to find, how to even find this Tan guy without her, and she doesn't want to have, her, have him killed. Uh, I guess I'll indulge this idiot just to see what he's doing around here. Yo. What do you want? Are you here to insult me some more? Uh, no, 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 no. That was a little bit of a <laughs> misunderstanding there. Really? Sure, so would you mind telling me what you're doing around here? Yeah, not much. Just waiting around for my master. And who is your master exactly? Oh man, his name's Bertram Toe. Oh wait. No kidding, small world. I'm actually looking for him. Oh man, I wish I knew where he was. I'm getting antsy waiting around for him. I need to tell him some stuff, you know? I don't know where he is or stays or anything. Oh man, I can't. So, hmm, what do what do you need to tell him? Oh man, wow, Bertram had to keep an eye on this guy. This Asian dude was been poking around Santa Monica. Bertram 
thought he might be a vampire or something like a vampire. I don't know. So what's the problem with that? Oh man, this guy, this this thing got wise to me. Now instead of me watching him, he's watching me, you know? I see this guy appear around me all the time, like up in the distance watching me, he'll warp up next to me. Oh man, then oh, disappear. Hmm. So I've actually seen something similar as well. You know, a guy watching me from the distance and then disappearing. It's freaking me out! I know this thing is totally toying with me. I want to put a bullet in its head, but who knows if that'll do anything. So I was waiting till I talked to Bertram, but well, hell if I know where he disappeared to. <laughs> it's messed up. So would you want me to take care of it, perhaps? Hell yeah! Right on! Okay, like I said, he's some kind of Asian vampire thing, you know? The only clue I got is this driver's license that he dropped once while I was tailing him. I've been so freaked out that I haven't even had a chance to check it out. Hmm, a driver's license, huh? Shouldn't that tell you who he is? No, the picture on the license isn't him. I don't know why he had it, but well, it might help you find out where he is and what he's doing. Here, take it. Okay, I'll look into it. Right on. Just come back and let me know the job's done, so I can stop freaking out. Maybe I'll see Bertram by then. Yeah, see ya. Huh. To be honest, mm, helping him might be a good idea to. A uh, good, good way to ingratiate myself towards this Bertram guy once I eventually find him. L let's take a look at that driver's license. Uh, Virgil Cram, California. Okay, that's a weird looking guy. But uh, that's not him, so. Hmm. How would that help me? I guess I can look, in a look him up. Hmm in that bail bonds computer. Mm, you know, it's quite a large database there. Bones of your ancestors will rise up Fuck, the hunters are still around. Unfortunately, they seem to be nearsighted or something. Or maybe they can't, just can't fish me out of the crowd. Evening, I'm here to use the database. Uh, so it was Crumb, wasn't it? Uh, Crumb V. Uh, paid in full. Subject's corpse identified. Held at the morgue. Huh. So I guess whoever was the owner of this driver's license is dead. And his body is currently at the morgue. I might check it out when I go in there. Which... Okay, that's all for me. Evening. Which I was planning to do anyway. Mm. For a couple of reasons. Not, not only to take the werewolf blood, but also to steal some drugs. And mm, to buy some blood from Vandal. But to be honest, I'm not sure if things have calmed down enough for me to try that. Hmm. I guess I won't know until I do. So. Fuck. That's one. That's one overzealous security guard there. <laughs> it's weird how nobody else seems to mind. Maybe I can circumvent him. Unless it's more than one, but... I'll go and check with uh, Vandal first. 
You think? The blood god returns. <laughs> blood god, right? I like it. So you like the lunatic? And uh, give me some of his blood. Mm, I'll buy a bit of this. Wait, I do need two packs of this lesser kind for the guy at the beach. I'm selling it at a bit of a margin. Uh, and I'll buy one of those for me as well. Well, it was nice doing business with you. And I think I'm actually going to um, drink it right now. Just to be at full strength. Mm, I can't risk, uh, you know, falling into a frenzy. What with all of those trigger happy guards around here? <sighs> to be honest, I'm not sure if I'll be able to. Uh, to get the password. I've been here, right? Yeah, this leads to... Well, let's try it. Okay, at the very least I can unlock the door. Now how about the cabinet? Okay, unlock. Okay, that kind of worked out, I guess. Now, where is the guard? And how to best circumvent him? So I could just like end him, but that's going to, you know, raise some problems with the police outside, and I don't really need that, especially with w with all of the hunters around. Fuck! I can't really hear him. Okay, where's prescriptions? Maybe I can find some prescription drugs in here uh, for trip. Fuck! He saw me through the window here. Fuck, I'm a little bit screwed. Yeah, I can already hear the police outside. Fuck, 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 fuck. Okay, let's... Let's deal with my business here, at the very least, while I'm here. Okay, maybe if I focus on the power of the blood. Fuck, it's still not enough. Well... I guess at the very least I can steal the fucking werewolf blood. Fuck. And he's in the way. Stand still. Fuck. 
least the hunters seem to be gone. I think I'll run to the beach. Uh, although, fuck, there are a lot of police on the piers. Fuck! How did she do that? I, I, I swear she wasn't there a second ago. I wonder, m maybe the hunters know magic as well? Maybe they are like magical hunters. But actually, I could stand still, mortal. Fuck, what the fuck has just happened? She, she, she just straight up fucking disappeared. Okay, I need to go down here for a second, wait for things to calm down a little. Fuck, what's the deal with those hunters, man? Like, I thought they were just human, but maybe they know magic themselves or something. again. I'm not sure what her deal is. Stand still. Fuck, she keeps... She keeps straight up disappearing. What the fuck is that? Okay, there are cops here as well. Fuck. Now you want to go onto the beach to sell the rest of the blood. Mm. I feel like I'm really out of my depth here. That was here. Oh. You have any of those items you mentioned? Yeah, I've got unicorn blood. Uh, I'll buy as much as you've got. I've got two bags for 240. I think I have enough for the procedure now. Thanks for the blood. Mm, I've also got this spe special chewing gum for your fangs uh, for a hundred bucks. Uh, okay, I, I guess. Here. Mm, and here's the holy steak. How about another hundred bucks? Yeah, here you go. Uh, now where can I find the head vampire? Oh, everyone knows that. His name's Lacroix, and he lives downtown. You won't have to live like this anymore. I'm going to kill the head vampire. <laughs> yeah, and good luck with that, you poor sod. <laughs> I just, I just thought it would be funny for him to try and attack Lacroix. Like, if he somehow succeeded, then I'm not, not going to cry over it. And if he doesn't, it's just going to be funny, isn't it? <laughs> Fuck. Fuck, I forgot to check the morgue. So I got startled by the guards again. There's supposedly a guy at the morgue that um, is somehow linked to this whole Asian vampire case that the s vampire slave, what's his name, Hoax, uh, the idiot one uh, he mentioned uh, back at the asylum. But I think, fuck, more hunters. Well, at the very least the police have calmed down. I think I'm going to go back home and wait for- fuck, they're waiting here as well. I don't have a choice, I have to fight her. Like, sh it's not that big of a problem on its own, it's just that she's probably going to 
call the others and probably the police as well. But I guess it is a little bit beneficial in a way because at the very least I can drain her dry, right? Stand still. Fuck. Okay, that didn't quite work. Let us try that again. Oh yeah, yeah. Mm. <laughs> well, if nothing else, those hunters surely are tasty. Okay, let's touch the body in the back of the alley. I guess I can send the werewolf blood to Lacroix. I think I'll just stay home and wait for the for things to calm down a little. Mm, actually, I was supposed to check on this Murrieta girl, right? Uh, 507. So that's up here. Anyone there? I guess not. Fuck. Hmm. Maybe they have a, like a spare key under a doormat or something? <laughs> You'd be surprised how many people do that. Uh huh. Idiots. Anything in here? Wow, and I thought my apartment was a shithole. This one doesn't even have a bed. Mm, there's a book. Huh, something about stealth. I guess I'll take it. Might be useful, given my new line of work. Mm, any messages on the phone? Hey, Mayor, it's Mike. Look. I gotta head downtown for a few days, maybe longer. If Reno calls, tell him to meet me down there. We got something to discuss, apparently. I'll be at Milton's place in the Skyline Lofts 2A. Sorry, baby. I'll explain everything later. Hmm, so I guess this Mike guy skipped town and went downtown. I wonder if that information is going to be worth anything to... Uh, to Kilpatrick on its own. Any new messages for me? No? Whew. Okay, that was another pretty tough day. I think I'll listen to some radio before going to bed. It's still a little bit till... Um, till the sunrise approaches. And I do need to calm down. Hello, LA. You're up way past your bedtime, aren't you? Hope you've slipped into something comfortable. I know I have. If you're new to town or just new to this whole radio thing, you're listening to The Dead of Night. The only girl who will spend the night with you and me first thing in the morning, guaranteed. Well, looks like the boards are lighting up. Aren't I the popular one? Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Who will be the lucky caller? You've got the first shot at Deb tonight. So, who do I have the pleasure of speaking to? Hi, Deb. This is, uh... Vigo? So, Vigo, why are you up so late? Um, I'm working the late shift here at the uh, Yacht Club. Uh-huh. How many boats do you own, Vigo? Two. Actually, three. Uh, one is uh, in the shop. I used to do a little yachting myself. What brand of yacht do you have? Um, you probably wouldn't know the brand. I, uh, bought them in Italy. Ah, la Italia bella. Parlate italiano? Arrivederci, Vigo. Caller 2, you're on the dead of night. Did you? I am. Hello, caller. I am. Is tonight a rerun? Deb. Caller number 3, what's keeping you up tonight? Deb, listen to me, Deb. They're at it again and people have got to know. They've got to know because they don't know. They won't report this stuff on the news because they own the news. Hello, Gomez. What's the latest conspiracy? Conspiracy? This goes beyond conspiracy, okay? There's no word for something as devious and Understand? People need to hear this. They need to know the real story. You've got our undivided attention. All right. As we all know, the 
Americans established a moon base back in the late 70s. That's no secret. What most people don't know is that they have been conducting a dig. Not for resources, but for artifacts. I see. Well, it's no coincidence that the Chinese have started conducting space missions. You know why? I'll tell you why. The reason is because the Chinese are trying to stop the Americans from finding an ancient space probe sent by the Beta Centaurians. And why? Because the Beta Centaurians are giving space technology to the Chinese to get back at the Andromedans, a.k.a. the Greys, for giving space technology to the Americans in the 50s. Fascinating. <laughs> To be honest, at this point I am just about ready to believe in aliens as well. It, it wouldn't exactly be weirder than anything I've seen. If anything, it would be less weird. Like, if you asked me a week ago, I would be already much more eager to believe in aliens than I would in fucking vampires. Should I say hot? Friggin' Chicken recently challenged several random people to a taste test between Friggin' Chicken and the other leading chicken flavored products. Let's listen for which one they prefer. Ma'am, care to participate in a taste test? Here, try this leading brand of chicken. Ugh, oh my gosh! Is that weak old fish? Now, now, try this. Oh, oh, this is some good chicken! What is this? Sir, take a test for me? Sure! Um, oh, oh, oh. Seriously, job these up your ass. Here, try this one. Mm. Hey, mm. mother fucking great chicken right there. What is this? It's friggin' chicken. This is cat, right? Are you feeding me cat? Try this. Holy fuck. fuck that's good. What the fuck is this? Shit? Nine out of ten people preferred friggin' chicken over the competition. Why? Cause that's some good fucking chicken. I mean. Friggin' chicken. Friggin' chicken, you'll swear it's the best you've ever had. You love the talking baby movie, and the talking pig, and even the talking car in that show. You know the one I'm talking about. But now prepare for the most hilarious talkingest normally mute object yet. He's Steve Cash, a New York banker and recent whittler down on his luck. And ten makes one hundred. Here's your money, ma'am. Ma'am, I happen to have a granular problem. That's it. I'm withdrawing all my millions from this bank. Cash! <laughs> She's an ATM machine with the soul of his dead wife. There's something familiar about this ATM machine. I love you. Wow, those marketing guys are geniuses. <laughs> Together, they're learning to make the most of their special situation. So that girl from accounting used me today. Really? She wasn't like everybody else. When she pushed my buttons, she was very gentle. Oh, honey, if you don't stop, I'm going to have to make a deposit. <laughs> Transferring cash. Wednesdays at 8.30 in the BMC. Say goodbye to yellow teeth and spots in your dirty dishes. It's incredible. Look at that shine. Your smile or these dinner plates. <laughs> Harnessing the secrets of ancient Egypt, now there's a dishwashing detergent so powerful, it doesn't just leave your dishes spotless, it actually whitens your teeth. Patented timerly spirit toys remove caked on food and grease and remain on the plate to be absorbed into your food to clean your teeth while you eat. Dazitron, the dishwashing detergent of the future for cleaner plates and whiter teeth. Last year, Democratic candidate Michael Redman bought a sports utility vehicle. Three months later, there were two separate incidences of hit and runs by an unidentified SUV in his area. Is Democratic candidate Michael Redman to blame? Can you afford to take that chance? Can your children? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thor, a candidate that has never committed vehicular homicide. Democratic candidate Michael Redman has never publicly stated his opinion on child pornography. Is it because he's hiding something? <laughs> to be honest, I'm not sure what the fuck even I'm, I'm even doing. I'm a fucking vampire and I'm here listening to fucking advertisement and commercials on the radio. That's a little bit pathetic. <laughs> you have to admit, some of them are pretty hilarious. Would you want your children to become hypocrites? Vote Republican Senator Robert Thorne, a candidate not accused of being a murderous child pornographer. In a world where people live and die. Do you think you can just go in there and handle this by yourself? If that's what it takes, he was about to meet his greatest foe. Kill them all! All of them! And a girl. Hello. Hi. And a comic relief sidekick who won't make it to Act 3. I picked the wrong month to cancel my life insurance. No, don't say that. You're gonna make it. 
with a guy from that other movie that was slightly popular, and what's her name from that show you sometimes watch. In a movie with two spectacular CGI battle sequences and an advertising campaign that will leave you no choice but to see this film. See it, because it's a movie, and all your friends are going. In theaters Friday and on DVD in three months. Hello, LA. You're up way past your. Okay, fuck, that's enough. I'm not going to spend the night listening to fucking commercials on the radio. I do feel the sunrise approaching, so. I guess that's it for today. It is a bit of an uphill battle, isn't it? Like, I feel like, like I've accomplished quite a bit already. Like, I have 600 bucks to my name and some valuables I can pawn. Mm, not to mention, I've learned a couple of things as well uh, about lockpicking and whatnot, hacking computers. But I also feel like I've made some crucial mistakes. The biggest one was probably draining that guy dry uh, on the sidewalk, cause that caught the attention of the hunters. And they sure are a problem, especially coupled with the police. Like, I... Th they aren't that much trouble by themselves, but I feel like it's, you know, building to... building to some greater problem uh, building to some greater problem eventually <laughs> this is a book about sneaking I guess I can read it before bed it's not going to hurt you know given how much trouble I've been with I be, I've been in recently a bit of skill in that regard uh, is surely not going to go amiss so, why not? Although, I must say, it's a pretty weird title. <laughs> Let's see what I can get from it. Huh. <laughs> I guess that was mostly about perving on chicks, which I never really had to do before, and I don't really need to do now. But then again, I can repurpose that knowledge in some other way. And with that, I guess that's it.